let's get this unfermented beer, our wort, into our one gallon glass carboy fermenter, okay? So let me show you what I'm gonna do. Because I'm dealing with such a small batch, normally if I would have been doing a five gallon batch, um, we, would, we would use the siphon um, again, and we would siphon from the kettle into our big, huge five gallon carboy, okay? Because that would just, that kettle is too big to pour. I'm actually gonna just see, because it's such a small batch, if I can just pour it directly from the kettle into here. So what I've got is my one gallon glass fermenter, and this has been sanitized in that sanitized solution. So um, if you're just coming in, make sure you go back to the video uh, that shows uh, about sanit uh, sanitizer and, and what brand I use and how you use it, what you need to sanitize. The funnel also has been in this sanitizer solution that's in this bucket. And then I have this filter uh, that I also sanitize. So this is where it's super important you know, sanitize your hands. I just stuck them down into that solution. Um, I'll do it again right now. I'm gonna give this a, a go. The other thing, I don't know if I'm gonna need it, but the other thing I sanitize is a spoon. Sometimes the hops are enough that I need to scrape them out and put, it, put them into um, a bowl. All right, so I'm gonna just set that over. I have a clean cloth over there. Um, I also have a bottle of sanitizer that I can spray things with if I need to. But this is kind of a funny setup. I just have a chiminea here, um, kind of holding this uh, in place, and I'm going to do this gently. So cross your fingers that this works, because it'll be a lot easier than having to siphon. Okay, so here we go. And we lost a lot of it to the boil, which is normal. We're going to end up adding uh, whatever we need to this uh, with more filtered water uh, to get our gallon in here. Okay, I'm going to go really slow. I'm trying to see if you guys can see this on there. Hopefully, my filter, I think it's going to work. Okay, I want to show you something now. The other reason that you cold crash, we talked about reasons for bringing that temperature down quick, but the solids that are in there, basically what this malt extract is, the hops, um, it lets, allows them to knock out, which means that they settle to the bottom, which does make it easier when you're siphoning into the fermenter or pouring it even like this. But here is, can you see, that's all the hops. Remember those little pellets? Okay, so now at this point, let me set that over there. Um, let me kind of carefully bring this. See how now our filter is getting clogged up, okay? So that's kind of why I'm going to get this bowl and my sanitized spoon. And as I go, I'm gonna get that out of there and put it into this bowl. I'll tie okay, so look at how clogged up that filter gets. So like I said, when you get to the bottom, I'm gonna run some water in there. When you get to the bottom, then those hops have settled down. And you remembered what those hops look like right? See how they, they rehydrate, okay, and they get quite full. Um, and I was telling you on the other videos, if you haven't, uh, if this is the first video you've watched, you haven't heard me say that, try all of your ingredients. I already tried the hops dry. Put it like, a little pinch between your cheek and gum, but seriously, now you can taste them, and then it really helps you to realize, because now it's been soaked in that work, and now it's not so bitter. Now we kind of have a balance between sweet and bitter. All right, so we're going to get rid of these. Now, I want you to see too, look at how much, can you guys see how much we've lost? Okay, so I don't need that anymore. So we're going to brew one gallon. We lost about, because the one gallon mark is right here. We lost about a half a gallon, not quite, because of the boil. And that's pretty common, okay? No big deal. All we're going to do now is I've got more filtered water, um, and water the water that you use is important, so you want to go back to one of the other videos um, to see how important, what kind of water you want to use. This is filtered water. So um, we're going to now just fill it up to the one gallon mark with that filtered water, and no problem. Okay, this is a little precarious, but when you're doing this by yourself, you get creative. <laughs> So this is my Brita filter that holds two gallons. Um, I showed it in a previous video. Um, we're just gonna fill this up with more filtered water. So nothing lost, I mean, we lost about a half a gallon, but it doesn't hurt anything. 
All right, so let's see if I can do this without having a huge disaster. Oh my gosh. All right, trying not to touch that top to anything because you want to maintain your sanitation, right? So we're almost there. I can't believe how much easier it is with a one gallon batch versus five gallons that I used to do. It's crazy. All right, so let's, we're almost there. Whoa, all right, whew, that was close. I feel like I almost knocked that off. All right, so here's our one gallon mark right here. This is just foam. We're not gonna worry about the foam right now. I'm gonna turn this off so I can get this thing off before it falls. It's time to pitch our yeast. We're gonna get our yeast in here. We've gotta aerate it because the yeast likes a certain temperature, so we've got it down below 75 degrees in a hurry. Um, and then we're going to pitch the yeast and shake it up. Um, yeast needs a certain um, oxygen level to do its job um, efficiently. Okay, you guys, you need to listen to something. I'm going to put my mic down on the floor. This is a sign of a good brewing day. Hang on. Could you hear that? <laughs> My floor is sticky. Uh, unfortunately, I have like a pergo floor here, uh, but I don't feel like I spilled a bunch of wort or anything, but it never fails. You end up with a sticky floor, but that's a good sign of a good brewing day. All right, so now we're going to pitch our yeast. That doesn't mean throw it away. We're going to put it into our wort here, okay? Um, oh, and before we do that, okay, I'm going to pour just a little bit, not much, about that much, maybe a shot's worth. Um, and I'll tell you what we're going to do with this here a little bit. I was always taught when you brew that you do what's called a brewer's shot. And it's not just the work, but more on that here in a minute. So the fact that you can hear my feet sticking to the floor tells you how the malt is uh, full of sugar, right? And those are the fermentables. So yeast needs sugar and oxygen to multiply, okay? And as it eats that yeast and multiplies, it, it's, the byproduct is alcohol and carbon dioxide, okay? Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that it's the yeast that gives the characteristic, the main flavor of the beer. So I was telling you that this Hefeweizen that I'm making, it's a German unfiltered wheat, um, just meaning it's gonna be a little bit cloudy. Um, it's traditionally like a banana, clove, kind of bubblegum-ish flavor, so it's slightly sweet. Um, it's one of my favorites, but it is this Weissen Ale that gives it that flavor. So a lot of people think it's the barley or some of the flavoring, flavoring grains um, that we put in there, um, but really the main underlying characteristic of any beer is the yeast. Okay, so let's go ahead and tear our package open. Okay, smell it. Kind of smells like bread. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to be very careful here and hopefully, and try not to let it, you know, fall down on the side. Let's try to get it right down into that wort. So we're going to go ahead and pitch our yeast in there. Make sure that I got it all out. There's a little bit more in there. And my, my fingers are sanitized, by the way. That's very important when you're doing this stage. All right, so I think we got everything in there that we're gonna get out of that packet. So now we need to aerate it. So remember I showed you in another video, a bung is a rubber bung. Um, it's been, I'm getting it out of the sanitizer right now and my hands are sanitized. It's got that little hole. We're actually gonna push that down in there, okay? And now for one minute, I've got to put my sanitized thumb or finger over that, and I'm actually going to shake it around, okay? So, and this is a lot harder when you've got a five-gallon carboy. <laughs> so this is, again, this is really nice. So we're just literally going to shake it, and I'm going to do that for a minute. So once you do that, you just want to let it sit. All right, so the last thing that we're going to do for this video is um, let's go ahead and deal with we need to do a blow off tube um, because from the first like couple days, this yeast could be really active and it will boil over. 
Um, I'll show you what a normal airlock is, and that's what we'll end up putting on there. But we've got to create like this tube, like our own kind of big airlock so that if that, and it'll foam way over it. So we're going to put it down into like a bucket kind of so thing. So I keep an old, this is a really huge pickle jar from Sam's Club. Um, I'm going to fill this with um, my Brita filtered water, maybe just about halfway. And then next what I'm going to do is um, get this, I've got, I'm going to use this tube. I'm going to have to buy more tubing probably um, for my next brew. And I actually broke my um, siphon <laughs> trying to get it off for this tube. But I, um, you can see how I kind of angled that, okay? I cut that into an angle. Um, what I'm going to do, you guys, is take this bung, and again, my hands are sanitized, and we're going to stick that, you know, good half inch or more, three quarters inch, into this bung, okay? And then this is going to go on here. Okay, so let's put that bung back in there nice and tight. Okay, this end is going to go down into here. Okay, and then the bucket, what I'm going to do is I just put this for extra safety into there, okay? So if as this starts to ferment, as it starts to eat up those sugars and create the alcohol, and it creates carbon dioxide as well, this is going to foam and a good chance it's going to come out. So this is a, called a blow-off tube system. And so we're going to put it in there. We submerge it in that filtered water so you don't get any contaminants that come back up into our carboy, okay? And that is nice filtered water. The bucket, again, is just in case the pickle jar overflows, then I don't have a mess in my apartment. So normally, you guys, um, once after a couple days, um, let me find my lid here. After a couple days and that settles down, this is called an airlock, and we're going to replace that. We're going to put that on top. We'll fill this about halfway. There's a fill line right here with sterile water. Um, and then this is like a little thing, a little cap that goes in there. And so it's going to keep bubbling as it's fermenting, okay? And you'll see that that little cap will kind of go bloop, 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 okay? And that's what we're going to replace that. And I'll do another video when we get to that point in a couple days, okay? Um, I will probably store this. I don't think I necessarily, you don't have to store this higher because there's a lot of pressure if it blows, okay? Um, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so what needs to happen is this needs to be stored in a cool, dark place. I'm in an apartment. I'm not quite sure. Maybe in the laundry room. I, sometimes I even get a blanket and put it over the top of that so that you don't have the sunlight or the light um, getting to that, um, which can affect your brew. Um, this came with a stick-on thermometer, which I'm going to do right now. And we want it to ferment, ideally, between 60 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, in order for the yeast to do the best job that it can. If it's colder than that or hotter than that, it can kind of skew the timing and it may not be as good. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna ferment for two weeks in this fermenter, then we're gonna bottle it, and I'll, I'll do videos throughout the whole process. Um, and then once you have it in the bottles, you store it for another two weeks, we're gonna put a priming sugar into those bottles. And then remember the CO2, the carbon dioxide I said that the, the yeast, uh, one of the byproducts is that alcohol, but also CO2. Um, as it eats just a little bit more of that sugar, okay, then it's going to carbonate our beer. Because this is going to get to a point with the alcohol that the yeast is going to stop fermenting. It's going to stop um, doing its job, okay. But when we put them in the bottles, we're going to put just enough sugar in there. Um, so that it will ferment just a slight bit more so we get that carbonation. All right, so that is it for this video. Um, it's going to be quite a while. It'll be, um, well, I'll probably do some shorts uh, videos, some shorts, because you want to check this blow-off tube, make sure that the water in that pickle jar doesn't go away, make sure it's not backflowing for some weird reason, which is, I guess is kind of nice that we have this big hill here. Um, and so I'll do some check-ins, but it won't be for a couple weeks before we can possibly do something else. So anyways, thanks for watching my channel. I hope you're enjoying this. And um, I'm running out of storage on my phone, so <laughs> I need to get all of these videos edited and uh, get some of these deleted off my phone. Anyways, I'm out. I'll talk to you soon. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you about the brewer's shot. So you, you siphon off a little bit of your wort, right, and put it into a glass 
Um, and then you get some scotch. And so you do like one shot of wort and like a half a shot of scotch. Mix it, especially like when it's very first warm out of the kettle. Um, mix that and that's a brewer shot and take it. It's actually super yummy. I don't have any scotch on me, so I'm not gonna be able to do it today, but definitely taste your wort. And you can already kind of taste the characteristics that it's gonna have. And you know, wort is obviously non-alcoholic, it's unfermented beer, but it's important to taste that. Um, and you can already kind of taste that hef uh, hefeweizen. Um, so anyways, that's it. I'm out. Cheers.